Welcome back. Morning at NTV is large on information dissemination, but in a non-partisan manner, and that we are here to talk about building standards. We have Mr. Timothy Mobala, the Manager of Compliance at the National Building Review Board. During implementation of the Building Review Act, the National Building Review Board noted that uh, the absence of baseline information on the compliance of the building operations, both ongoing and complete, as the decision to collect data. Now, a team of 95 graduates were hired to collect data in the building industry in the 11 cities that is in the Republic of Uganda we are talking about Kampala, Jinja, Mbale, Soroti, Lira, Gulu, Arua, Mbarara, Masaka, Fort Porto and also Hoima. Now we are going to be expanding more on this survey with Mr. Timothy Mubala, the manager of compliance at the National Building Review Board. First of all, very good morning. Thank you for joining us. Why was this building review uh, very, very, very important at this time? Why was it significant? Well, this survey was actually very important because uh, uh, if, if you can't measure it, then you can't mm. manage it. Indeed. Without data, you can't do anything. You can't do much. Indeed. So the purpose of the, the survey was to give us a better understanding of what is happening in the, mm. in the building industry. Mm. And uh, the exercise took two months. Hmm. We started in June and completed at the end of July. I see. Uh, yes. So you were on in 11 cities trying yes. to assess whether or not these jurisdictions were actually uh, adhering to the set compliance standards. Exactly. What did you discover? Are these you know, jurisdictions adhering? Well, um, the general compliance <coughs> levels were quite low. On average, it was 22.7. Uh, 22.7. Uh, yes, and that is, uh, that's the average overall. Mm. Now, we looked at both the complete inf uh, structures mm. and then the ongoing ac active construction sites. Mm. So for the active construction sites, the average compliance level was only 19.5, while for the complete structures, mm. it was about uh, uh, 25. Mm. And uh, uh, we looked at different parameters. So for the uh, complete structures, mm. we were looking at uh, uh, whether the, the developers had approved plans, mm. whether they had, had building permission before they are constructed, and uh, whether they acquired occupation permits. Mm. This is very, very important. And the other important parameter we looked at was uh, the presence of maintenance schedules, because mm. this is what ensures the good health of the building mm. uh, that we are occupying or living in. Mm. Unfortunately, of the five uh, five thousand <coughs> four hundred properties we visited, none had had uh, a maintenance schedule. So wow. that means people are just living in the structures. Indeed, there is no intentional maintenance. Mm. Now, on the side of the active construction sites, uh, we looked at parameters like uh, uh, acquisition of uh, a building permit. Mm. Is the is the structure is the actual construction legal? <coughs> a presence of. Uh, um, uh, uh, we also looked at the the presence of uh, uh, if of of construction information, supervision proof of supervision or involvement of professionals, mm. right from uh, the act, the design, uh, carrying out investigations where we need soil investigations, mm. actual supervision uh, of the of the structure. Mm. We also looked for signboard information, which is basic information. Mm. Uh, but the outstanding uh, matter on the side of the active construction mm. sites was the apparent absence mm. or non-involvement of professionals because only 6% mm. of the active construction sites had professionals involved. I see. So 94% of the construction that is ongoing, we don't have professionals. Is it largely due to COVID-19? Um, I wouldn't say so. Because now they know they because can't do the anything they want. The survey mm. actually started before mm. Uh, the lockdown it's been a culture yes it's been a culture hmm. and uh, which is a bad one especially for Kampala here Kampala when it comes to the complete buildings they've been put at number nine yes. out of the 11 cities Kampala yes. is came through at number nine that is for yeah. a complete structures yes. but when it comes to active uh, structures they are at number three yes. meaning Kampala has been adhering to the compliance standards yes. as of the COVID-19 pandemic but before that they were largely ignoring these set standards what were the push um, factors behind that? I think that? it's not really to do with COVID hmm. it's about the uh, enforcement the, the, of the enactment act. of the I see of the building contract mm. because uh, it came into force in 2018 mm. and that is where uh, uh, KCCA put in place mm. systems structures uh, to basically implement the building contract Indeed. now before it's a different story 
and uh, that's why uh, so it's about implementation. Of yes, it. about implementation of right. the act. Go and on. actually, when we look at uh, the best and the worst, still it is the same. Mm. Hoima is doing relatively well. It's among is the best. Much as the <coughs> compliance level was uh, average was 22 percent, mm. Hoima mm. was about 30 percent. Mm. Uh, they are doing well both on the old and the new. Indeed. And uh, so we have different strategies. Mm for the old and different strategies mm. for the new. We've attributed the performance of Kampala to the implementation of the act having taken center stage. But then yeah. when I look at Gulu, which is at 29.6% of when it comes to complete structures, but when you look at those that are incomplete, Gulu is at 13.3%. This yes. is after the implementation mm -hmm. of the act, meaning Gulu was doing okay when it comes to compliance before yeah. the enactment or implementation of the act, but they're yes. now doing worse yes. with, with these new structures they are trying to erect. Yeah, what are the push true. factors behind this? Well, uh, mm. one of the, of course, Gulu is one of the upcoming cities. I see. Gulu and Lira. All right. There's a lot of construction going mm. on. And um, one general finding uh, about the, the presence of professionals, mm. we found that in up country, we don't have professionals present. All right. So we also have another engagement with uh, the professional bodies. Mm. Uh, to, 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 to come up with a strategy mm. on how they can ensure their presence. Mm. Because sometimes the developers also don't know who the actual engineer is. So we want uh, all the information from the professionals to be provided. Mm. As at NBRB, we have come up with a platform where, the, where we are putting all the information of professionals mm. on one platform. So it's like a one-stop center. That is the beams, mm. and we would expect uh, developers to, through our website you can access and get the professionals you need. But we want the professional bodies also <coughs> to take that step and ensure their presence All right. up country. <coughs> well, Mr. Mubala, Timothy, when you look at uh, Lira, yes. they were doing badly even before the implementation of this same act when it comes to complete buildings mm -mm. Yeah. at uh, 9.7. Yes. That is th at the bottom. It's yes. the 11th worst performing city yes. and also the 11th worst performing city when it comes to in complete buildings. What yes. were some of the push factors behind this? Why are they largely behind the chain? Uh, well, um, Lira, unlike mm. uh, other local authorities Indeed. or cities yes. has not yet established uh, uh, the building control, uh, the building committee. I see. Because uh, in the implementation of the building uh, control act, mm -hmm. there is a hierarchy. Hmm. We we supervise the local authorities. Hmm. The local authorities have a building committee, uh, the committee that is focusing on the buildings, hmm. the health of the building, hmm. and uh, they work through a hmm. building control hmm. officer who also has assistance. Right. Now, in uh, Lira, that, that is not yet established. Mm. And you know that the Building Control Act was, uh, uh, was enacted uh, basically to, uh, to, to harmonize Indeed. and uh, set building standards to ensure um, uh, a well-developed, well-planned uh, built environment. Mm. Now, that is not there in Lira, and we have, we have had engagements mm -hmm. with uh, the leadership there and uh, uh, we expect them to perform better. Mm. Now, these are baseline figures. Yes. This is where we're starting. Indeed. And we expect that probably uh, the next next year, when we do the same exercise, we expect better Indeed. performance. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mubala, you and I know very well the phenomena we've been grappling with are the uh, collapsing buildings within this country. Now, yeah. with this uh, survey, do you think it will lead to a reduction in this uh, same uh, problem taking center stage, of collapsing course, buildings? Of course, we expect mm. a reduction because what yeah. we're going to do we are going to provide the detailed information right. for all the properties we visited. We're mm. going to provide it to the local authorities mm. uh, for further action. Yeah. And uh, so we expect a scientific approach uh, to each of the properties <coughs> that we are going to, mm. uh, for each of the properties that we visited. Mm. And uh, we would expect the local authorities to take this up to the next mm. level. Uh, where they fail, they can appeal to us because mm. the National Building Review Board also does with appeals, mm. both from the local authority mm. but also from uh, the property developers. So uh, either way, we have to solve this problem. Well, the viewer might think it's all rosy when you conduct these baselines, but what they do not know is in later ago, you did encounter some resistance from some of the proprietors uh, yes. uh, and owners of these buildings. How yes, so? And what did, what did that culminate into? Well, um, mm. We had uh, a lot of resistance, mm. uh, but we worked together with uh, the, the police mm. and local authorities there mm. to grant us access mm. to some of these properties. I see. But uh, in one instance, our staff were actually locked up for about uh, three hours. I see. 
in someone's property uh, because they did not want anyone to. Was this to the only challenge you encountered, Timothy? Well, the other challenge is that uh, we had intended to reach out to a bigger number, mm. but because of the lockdown, we couldn't reach out to uh, the anticipated mm. number. Mm. We only reached out to 91% uh, of what we had planned. Mm. Uh, uh, the lockdown affected us. We were also not able to to check a bigger number of um, the the complete structures because mm. when the lockdown came in, people went home. Mm. So you cannot keep going to people's properties mm. when they are isolated themselves for mm. health reasons. All right, Timothy Mubala, the manager compliance at the National Building Review Board. Many thanks for having made the time to speak to us. Of course, these are only 11 cities. You intend to also go to municipalities. Yes. That is the ongoing survey. After that, where are you going? Uh, we'll go into the municipalities, town All right. councils, mm. and then the districts. All right, thank you very much for coming through. Yes. Indeed, you're still watching Morning at NTV. Well, a break is in the offing, but we return shortly with more conversations largely here on Morning at NTV. You should be in the know that today is World Teachers Day. We want to talk about the teacher gaps 